The reality is, is that um, we've almost exhausted our marine resources around the world. And I'm not just going to speak from a South African perspective because it's a global problem. And, uh, and fishery scientists are very well aware of this. And at the end of the day, everybody is sort of looking to aquaculture, um, to farming fish, to provide some sort of relief for wild fish stocks. Yes, we have to start farming fish, we actually don't have a choice anymore, we have to look at these new technologies. Fishery scientists are very well aware of this. This is a, a very fast growing industry around the world, even in South Africa. Something like 42% of our table fish that is served in South African restaurants has aquaculture, was aquaculture produced. So this brings us to the Port Elizabeth um, fish farm. Um, I know it's caused a lot of controversy. I know that the environmental impact assessment was a hurried one. And, uh, and one of the big problems with this environmental impact assessment was it tended to overlook the ecotourism that we have in the bay. And seen as it's a fish farm that's proposed for, for, um, for in the bay, it's not a land-based fish farm, um, it would have been absolutely critical to factor in ecotourism. So we need fish farms. Um, I'm going to always go on record uh, as saying that we have to start looking at farming fish. Um, it's our last wild caught protein that's still being harvested and we're running into, a, into trouble globally in terms of providing for ever increasing human populations. I'm against where it is, but a fish farm, yeah. Uh, they, they are doing, they're not just looking for processing of fish, they are trying to help our stocks uh, bring our stocks up. But location, uh, uh, Nelson Mandela Bay, uh, the uh, Ironman, uh, local swimmers, uh, ski boaters, uh, and then also the shipping lanes. What happens if bad weather and the, uh, and the ships go off course? Uh, it's a, a huge hazard. Um, a lot of people say it's going to bring more sharks into, uh, uh, into uh, our bay. There are so many already, so, and there hasn't been a shark attack. There are, obviously like everything in life, there will be pros and there will be cons. But I think, um, in my opinion, that it should not be allowed to happen. Eh? It will have many, 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 um, in my opinion, too many. In my opinion, the bad outweighs the good in this, in this circumstance. It will have too many negative impacts on the environment, even on, uh, on the economy on tourism, because it'll be off one of the prime swimming beaches. It'll be off one of the main, the main beaches that create revenue for the bay. So, I mean, it will, number one, it will, uh, it will attract, um, obviously, bigger, larger marine life, like um, sharks and what if you, so, and I don't particularly feel like getting in the water with sharks. So, it'll, it'll attract sharks. Number two, it won't be a very nice thing to look at when you are swimming or taking a walk on the beach or whatever, it won't be a nice thing to look at. And number three, all those fish in a confined space being fed chemicals and, and whatever they are, whatever they will feed them, all that fish in that small space, all of basically the excrement, it will just drop right down onto the reef and basically kill whatever marine life there is over there. Another thing is disease. With all those, with all those, uh, let's say condensed, with all the, with all the life condensed in those nets, marine, uh, whatever, whenever you have that many organisms in such close proximity, you have um, sicknesses, viruses, whatever, breaking out. And if that should get into our natural ecosystem, it, it could be disastrous. So yeah, I think it's, it's not just not worth it. Though. I think it's just not, it's just not worth just not worth it. It takes a long time to actually get a farm started. Um, and the problem with legislation in this country is that it's quite actually difficult to get an agriculture farm like permitted to go. It takes like years of trying to get permits, applying for farm permits. You need a permit for getting broodstock, you need a permit for keeping the fish, you need a permit for, 
You need a permit for growing the fish. You need a permit for selling the fish. And all these things take years to actually get. So from that point of view, it's an expensive venture. Um, not a lot of people have that kind of money to start off. It's risky because during all of the time, you could get, at the first level, if you get denied a permit, and they'll be like, OK, you can go away now. <laughs> you don't need to do this. Then you can start the fish, not be able to get your, your stock to start off. Then if you get that, you might get some sort of disease in the tank or some sort of nitrogen spike that will just wipe out your entire system. So you have to play really smartly. You have to have a lot of money. You have to make sure everything is aligned in the way that will actually grow out. Um, so that's why it's taken actually this long to actually get farms going. I do agree that it's something that's important and we need. It's, it's, it is what I think the way forward in actually curbing um, poverty and, and hunger in this, in this country and all over the world. But it needs to be done right and it's just difficult to get going. But once you get going, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a process, but once you get going, it actually works. I mean, it works in other countries. Um, but it's definitely something that this country should have been investing in. We have to actually solve the matter, um, and it's not going to be solved by um, reckless decision making in terms of placing placement of farms and so forth. And uh, you know, it's the cheaper option to put a fish farm out in the sea um, because that means the environment carries the burden of cleaning up the waste. There lies the problem, you know, because that waste is often carried shorewards before it's broken down. There's lots of uh, fecal matter from fish, so there's E. coli in the water. There's also the fact that um, that uh, a whole uh, large number of fish. Uh, contained in a, in a confined environment is, is potentially you know, an attractant for sharks. And uh, it was probably um, allocated to Algoa Bay because Algoa Bay is one of the few sheltered bays, uh, relatively sheltered bays along the South African coast. So we do have a rugged coastline and it poses a problem. So at the end of the day, um, you know, it's going to come to the point where we have to farm fish. We can't always put it in the sea because of conflicts with other use groups. They obviously didn't have communication with the, with the people because now the people are all petitioning against this thing because they are not happy. And it's, like I said, there's no communication between people and now you have three, four, five sectors not, not happy with this whole thing. Not just, not just the fishermen, not just tourism, not just industry, not just the airports, not just scientists, like everyone, almost everyone is, is just, not happy about what's going on because there wasn't any initial proper communication, there wasn't proper planning, there wasn't, you know, it could have been done way better. So we have to actually then bite the bullet and pay the costs of having land-based fish farms and we have enough land-based, uh, land space for, for land-based fish farms and they don't always have to be um, at the coast um, for coastal fish, they could be inland for freshwater fish. It's impossible that a recreational fisherman can damage uh, the fish stocks to the vast, uh, vast amount that it has. Uh, there's mainly uh, international vessels that aren't allowed in our waters. Uh, the uh, permits have been expired um, um, and mainly trawlers. Um, our local commercial vessels, they don't, uh, they, they don't put enough strain on our, our fish uh, to, to damage the, the, the size and the quantity of the fish nowadays. Um, but also, like I said earlier, it was, it's all got to do with the weather patterns. If you look over the last 10, 12 years, the, the weather has made like a huge cycle. It, it's, we thought that uh, it was because of global warming, uh, the weather was just changing. But if you look back, uh, it's actually, it's just making one big U-turn. Uh, the uh, fish stocks didn't deplete, but the fish went uh, different areas. Um, years ago, like in the 80s, the 70s, and um, uh, now they, uh, then they came back, and now the same thing's happening. Uh, uh, our local dusky cob, that, uh, that has that, that is a huge strain, because there are so a few rivers in, uh, especially Port Elizabeth, and um, I don't know if you want to call it greed, or, or locals just trying to make a living, but they troll and they, 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 they keep all the breeding stock instead of taking the smaller fish. And that's why uh, th there is a huge problem with the dusky cob. Yeah, I think that is, it's definitely a, a huge problem that, that we as 
as a uh, as a metro are facing. I think, having said that, I think we still have um, we still have good fish, good fish, and I'd I'd like to think that we can protect that. But I think the met the, the the waters around the bay are getting very depleted. Eh? I think it's it's mostly due to uh, due to the overfishing and the basically the poor control of our fish resources and our uh, our natural resources as a whole. I think the commercial industry has, has a lot to do with it, but I mean there is a lot of people, as the growing population demands more food, more food, less, uh, more fish, more fish needed, less fish alive, so. The subsistence fishers, which are fishermen that um, fish for a living, so they're either eating, eating the fish that they catch or they are selling the fish in order to buy stuff that they need to use. They had a meeting about how it's unfair that they are treated the same way as recreational fishers um, and the commercial fishers sort of get everything that they want to. They are unhappy. I personally believe that recreational fishers, um, they, they don't fish as often as commercial fishers, but like there still needs to be enforcement in this country. Like our country has a tendency to like put things down very neatly on paper, like have a lot of laws and um, legislations and stuff. When it comes to actually enforcing the thing on the ground, they, I mean, they fall short. I mean, we've seen that recently with the abalone uh, fishery. I mean, in the Cape, they, that those abalone were totally decimated and they were still being poached for, for many years after the fishery actually collapsed. And there might be people right now diving out there and just catching a lot of abalone. big drive now around the world um, to actually get the end users, you and I, um, to actually be aware of, of the crisis and, and be aware of, of those fish that are um, that actually can be sustainably eaten and those that actually shouldn't be eaten. And um, you know we have the South African Sustainable Seafood Initiative which is um, known popularly by the acronym SASI. And, um, and if you eat at certain restaurants, uh, John Dory's in particular, they advertise Sassy at their, at their tables, and, uh, and you get the opportunity to act, actually select green species um, and, and to certainly um, hopefully eat, if you had to eat anything that was uh, listed as an orange, uh, eat with caution um, that you would feel too bad to actually eat fish off that, uh, off that list and, and possibly avoid them. And then obviously they also list species that are in the red category that no one should be eating. Um, many people are actually unaware, especially in small towns, in small restaurants, that certain species are not allowed to be sold. Uh, they're recreational only. You're only allowed to catch them for fun and for feeding yourself um, and, and not actually be sold in a restaurant. So often people go to small towns and they see spotted grunter on the menu or um, dusky cob that's been caught locally or um, white steam brass, and those are all illegal to sell. So it also helps end users educate themselves um, in terms of, um, of, what, of what they should be eating and what they shouldn't be eating. And I don't think that um, it should be any different. Um, dusky cob in South Africa, we only have 3% of them left. They're a common inshore fish species, um, and people shouldn't be eating them anymore because there's so few left. Um, by the same token, um, you shouldn't be um, using rhino horn for medicinal purposes. Um, you shouldn't really be eating dusky cob anymore. Um, but unfortunately, fish don't tend to have as much of a charismatic status as rhino or lions or any of those other creatures that get a lot of public attention. But uh, by, by all means, there are some fish species um, in our coastal waters that we probably think will become extinct within our lifetime um, as practicing scientists. And, uh, and people need to be aware of these things. They need to, they need to be educated end users. I think fishing is something that I, uh, fishing is something I believe I was born for. I just, I think fishing is, fishing is basically what I live for. I love to be on the water, I love to be out there with nature, just in harmony and I'd really like it if if the if my fellow fishermen could see, could take just take a step back and see the beauty and the serenity of what of what's out there basically. Because truth is it might not be there forever. 
might disappear in the blink of an eye and I, I really don't want to see that happen, you know. I, I want to see, I want to see how future generations can go out there the same way that I did, in the exact same way that I did and go and enjoy a day's fishing at Swartkops or at Sunday's River or at Gamtoos or wherever they choose to go. I think, and I think, I think that's, I think when I'm out there, I don't want to get religious, but when I'm out there, I feel closer to God. So I think that's, I think that's a really profound thing. And I, I'd love, I'd love it if future generations could experience what I experience when I go fishing.